thank you all for, for being here. Um, my name is uh, Josh Planos. I am the Director of Public Relations and Communications for the Better Business Bureau. I'm joined by my predecessor, Margot Rikus. She has 25 years of experience handling these awards and will handle the application piece of the presentation. Um, I'm just gonna share my screen here and we'll get started. So uh, just a quick reminder, if you could, to, to please uh, mute yourself if you aren't speaking. We want to avoid background noise, uh, if at all possible, since we're recording and uploading this workshop to YouTube for those who couldn't make it today and who want to go back and rehear certain portions. Uh, thank you again, though, for, for all being here. First and foremost, these awards have been instrumental in spotlighting ethical businesses and some of the best employers in the services areas that we cover. Uh, to start, I asked the chair of our Torch Awards Committee, who unfortunately couldn't be here today, uh, to message me why he thought these awards are so important to our communities. And he said, quote, these awards exemplify not what you hope to be, but who you are. Ethics, honesty, and integrity are hallmarks of all businesses that all businesses should pursue. And by, he by being here for this session, you are doing just that. So please apply. So in that spirit, uh, we'll go through this presentation. I'll stop for questions about halfway through, and then Margot will cover her portion uh, on the criteria of the application, and she'll answer those questions once she concludes. So we have given out hundreds of integrity awards, but this year will be our first ever torch awards. They had previously been referred to as integrity awards, but that transition is primarily a branding one and in compliance with the International Association of Better Business Bureaus, which is effectively our governing body. Now this transition doesn't really impact the categories or the judging. So what you know about the Integrity Awards will apply to the Torch Awards. And what's cool about the Torch Awards is there's an international Torch Awards event. So if you happen to win a local one, you're automatically entered for international recognition and additional exposure uh, with you know, going up against companies in Canada and Mexico. So that's a really exciting opportunity, uh, certainly for, for all of you uh, as companies. Uh, these awards honor organizations whose leaders demonstrate commendable personal character and ensure the organization's practices meet the highest standard of ethics. A trusting relationship with customers and community is essential. And for more than a century, the BBB's collective mission has been to advance marketplace trust. So these awards are really meant to embody that spirit. Um, all eligibility information can be found on our website. Hopefully you got that link in an email just before this presentation, presentation started, but I also have the URL written here. Um, and certainly I'll walk you through uh, the actual uh, landing page as well. Um, here shortly. Um, but all that information can be found on our website. If you search for the Better Business Bureau online, its location tracking should bring you to our landing page, which is the BBB in Nebraska, uh, South Dakota, um, the Kansas Plains in Southwest Iowa. Uh, but I'll put that link uh, to the landing page in the chat for you to access as well, um, you know, soon enough. Um, the Torch Awards, as you can see here uh, at, at the bottom, is the first uh, icon listed under programs and services on the landing page. Uh, we have information on eligibility, award criteria, the judging process, the benefits for award winners, and much, much more. Um, this is also the first year that we have a digitized application. It's much easier. It's much more streamlined. Uh, so when you're ready to apply, you can do so with the links found on our landing page. And just for now, I'll take you to that uh, landing page so you can see it. Um, hopefully this is popping up on your screen. So this is, uh, this is what it, you know, our, our landing page looks like. When you're ready to apply, you'll click this official application form and it'll take you right to the application. Okay. So the deadline for uh, this, these awards is April 29th. So that gives you roughly 
three months from today to submit all application materials. Applicants will be informed of the judging results by August 1st and winners will be honored in their service area. Uh, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to have applicants compete with much larger companies or to have companies compete with charities or for companies in South Dakota to compete with companies in Nebraska. So our categories are as follows, businesses with one to four employees, five to 10, 11 to 24, 25 to 99, 100 to 349, 350 to 499, 500 and above, and then charities with one to 24 employees and 25 uh, or more. Omaha and Southwest Iowa will be judged separately from South Dakota, who will be judged separately from the Kansas Plains, et cetera. So you, know, you don't need to be worried about uh, competing with companies in, in other states. So our eligibility requirements, like I mentioned, can be found online, but they're also listed here for you to, to um, you know, look at. Uh, I'll highlight some of the most important ones, including that your business doesn't need to be accredited to apply but it does need to be physically located in our service areas and have been in business a minimum of three years with the same ownership. Now, again, all of that information can be found online. And certainly if you have any questions, I'll list uh, Margo and I's contact information at the end of the presentation, and you can always reach out. We'll be you know, happy to answer. Okay, so let's take a look at the application. So this is our application form. Like I said, it's, it's digitized for the first time. Um, we've got contact information, everything you should need. Um, and then we'll kind of walk you through it. So all of these uh, forms will need to be, um, you know, you, you'll need to plug in your information there. But what's really great about the digitized application is you don't need to do it all at once. In fact, I, I believe Margot's recommendation would be that you don't do it all at once because um, you know it's it's just so much information um, to try to tackle uh, in a single sitting. And then at the bottom right corner of the screen, oh sorry about that, I was unaware that this was. How about now? Can you guys see this now? Is that uh, showing up? Okay, fantastic. Apologies. Um, so this is the the application form. Um, all this information is, is pretty straightforward, but at the in the bottom right corner, say you know you need to, to run um, one of these questions by by someone else within the company, or you know you, you need to take a break. Uh, there is this save button in the bottom right corner. If you click it, it'll tell you that your progress has been saved. You'll get a form link um, URL that you can copy and paste into a note into a note on your uh, on your computer, or you can send yourself an email. Um, or you could put in your email address right there and it'll send it to you so you can pick up right where you left off. So um, hopefully that will be helpful, but all of this information should be pretty straightforward. Um, the brief description, the number of employees, what service area you're applying for and things like that. Excuse me, Josh, uh, you have the application, just the word application on a screen. Oh, is the application not showing? No. Oh. Still not seeing the website, huh? Okay. Hmm. All right, let's try something else. Sorry about that, everyone. There we go. Okay. So yeah, again, this is the application. Um, all the information you'll need to inputs just right here. And then here's that save button I was talking about. It's in the bottom right corner of every single page. If you click it, this uh, your progress has saved box will, will pop up. It'll tell you uh, what URL to follow if you need to pick up um, where you left off. You can certainly put in your email address and have it sent there. So you always have that copy uh, in your inbox, but this will allow you to kind of take your time and, and take it piece by piece at your own pace. Um, now that I know that I wasn't sharing uh, our landing page, I will go back there. This is the um, this is our Better Business Bureau landing page. There are you know more than a hundred, I believe, Better Business Bureaus around the country. So you're going to want to make sure that you're on ours. Um, so this is what uh, it'll look like. This is the Torch Awards um, portal, basically. So if you you know want to go uh, to the application via our landing page, you'd click in here. This is the landing page with all the information on eligibility, 
the judging process, everything you should need. And then here's the actual link to the application itself. Okay. I go back to the presentation. Okay, so our criteria for these awards follow what we call the four C's, character, culture, customers, and community. So before I hand the presentation off to Margot to discuss the criteria, do you have any questions about what I've covered so far? Okay. Um, if you have, you know, some, uh, feel free to leave them in the, in the chat box, um, but I'll uh, pass the presentation off to, to Margo at this time. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. I have been involved, as Josh said, I started the awards back in 1995 for Omaha. So I've been at a lot of judge at all the judgings, actually. And he explained how it's judged. We have judging panels in our four um, major cities. So uh, you're competing with companies in your area and the same size of companies. And the judges are broken up. So they're only judging one group at a time. Sometimes they judge more than one group, but they only do one group at a time. So it's a very fair process. And my experience has been the problem most companies have when they enter this contest is they answer the questions or address the criteria in this time in in this application it's criteria rather than questions but it's basically the same thing as we've had before but they don't address what is asked for they give great answers but they don't go with the questions or the criteria so what I'm suggesting is number one, do not do it all at once and always have somebody else in your business. And if you're a one person business, have a spouse, a friend, somebody else, read your answers first before you submit them. You can type them on, on another sheet first and go over it and, and do all your um, editing and then you can copy it and paste it into the, the box where uh, on the application form uh, don't hurry you have plenty of time think about them if you're a bigger business you can ferret it out to other people in your in, in your company that know more about that area or meet together as a group and discuss these criteria and see from your employees from your managers what how they'd answer to get input before you write okay that is really really very very important now on the application itself there are four criteria the first one is is character and you can see what it asks for and that's looking really for the character of the leader and what that person's ethics are. It's asking how you strive to live and lead a high character and intentionally seek feedback in order to make personal uh, improvements. How you empower your staff to carry out your organization's commitment to building and maintaining ethical business practices and tools, activities, or trainings that you use for your staff's commitment to character ethics as part of uh, the organization's normal business practices. That's what you're going to see online. That's the actual application. That's what the judges are going to be asking for. But what I've done for you, and Josh will send you the supplement, I've come up with some specific things that you can suggest. They are not online because they're not part of the international award template, but I'd like to share these with you in this workshop and we can send them to you. 
and they may help you answer, address this uh, first uh, criteria. The first one is, is if your organization or your president or leader or owner, if you have a code of ethics, this would be a good place to put this in. Say, this is our code of ethics. This is what we do to enhance ethics. This is how we carry it out. There can be a personal statement from the leader's commitment to ethical business practices. You can have a description or evidence of the leader's participation in workshops, conferences, or training in ethics. You can talk about how the leader is transparent, values candor from its employees, from its customers, and how you receive personal feedback from your stakeholders. And the last one that you could address is give examples. The judges love examples. If you can give a really specific example, that will be great. There's no limit to what you can write. In the past, we had page limits. There were points. This is much more subjective. So think about it as you were the judge, what would you want to hear about your company's ethics? Does anyone have any questions about this criteria? This is basically looking at the overall ethics of your organization. Okay, no questions. We'll move on to the next one. This is your culture, your ethical culture. You're supposed to illustrate how your organization works towards a culture of trust through clarity of purpose, empowering employees, and opportunities for growth. That's a really wide area. And this gives you a lot of leeway. The ones that are given on the application is ask, asking you to tell how you unite your team around your organization, your vision, and mission statement how you empower employees to help shape the expectations and culture of your organization, and what practices your company uses that demonstrates leadership, commitment to individual employees. This is where you really can go and say how you treat your employees. This is focused on your employees, what you do to motivate them, what kind of uh, perks do you give them? What kind of uh, rewards do they get? What kind of you know, benefits do you offer your employees? How you go above and beyond in serving your employees? Because when employees are happy, how you communicate with your employees, they will serve you better. They will be better able to interact with your customers. So this is a really important part and gives you a lot of leeway in what you're going to address. These are very broad, broad bullet points, and you can put things in there to back up what you're saying. And the judges like that. You can give an example of, um, it can be anything from the environment, how you, what you've done during COVID. This is a great time to talk if you're back in your offices what you've done to keep your employees safe and protected. Or if you're at home, say you've opted to um, have your people working remotely because you feel until the COVID crisis uh, goes down and it's safer, you have your employees working from home. So there are all kinds of ways that you're gonna answer this. And obviously a small company's answers are going to be very different from a big company's answers. And the judges understand that. And we know that small companies have a lot smaller group of people to draw their answers for, from, and they take that into consideration. That's why they're judged separately. You judge mostly between the companies that have also applied in that. Uh, that category. You're not judged against a bigger company or a charity 
or charity isn't judged against a business. So um, we try to make it as fair as possible. And if you ever have questions, and we're going to, I'm going to tell you this over and over again, especially if this is your first time of applying, you reach out to Josh or me. I'm semi-retired. I'm working on this and the event with Josh, but I have time. You can call me. I'd be happy to talk to you. If you want me to read something you've written, you can email it to me and I'll tell you if it's on point or not. I'm not going to tell you what to say, but I'll tell you whether it addresses the criteria or not. And take your time. Okay, on to the next criteria. Okay, number three is customers. This is how do you treat your customers? What are you doing to keep them? That's, that's what we want. And what do you do to get new customers? Uh, what do you do to advertise? How you employ, empower your employees to proactively address issues experienced by customers. Customers have issues. This is a really great place to put in some examples of a difficult customer and actually how you handled it and the results. Did you keep that customer? Were they, did they become a loyal customer? How you go above and beyond to maintain transparency. Oh, you went to suggestions. <laughs> Sorry. Maintain transparency with your customers. And the last one is give an instance where your commitment to honesty was a positive differentiation in a challenging customer interaction. And um, judges love reading those. I love reading those. Some of them are really unique. Some of the examples are how we had a concrete company once. And uh, no matter what that company did, the customer wasn't happy. So at their own expense, with their own people, they completely redid the concrete job at no charge because they said keeping the customer happy was more important than the extra time it took. Those are the kinds of things the judges are looking for, how you go above and beyond in serving your customers and uh, how you treat them and how you train your employees to treat your customers. Does anyone have any questions about this criteria? And I will go into some suggestions for criteria three. Next screen, Josh, please. Okay. Here we have um, Josh, I'm going to let you read this. It's a little blurry. I, I'm having some vision problems today. So Josh, will you read what, number one, please? Uh, that's better. Thanks. I can read this. Describe how your organization uh, demonstrated ethical decision making with a difficult customer or a client or a donor. You can describe how you get feedback from customers, clients, donors to assess your organization's performance. You may even include a copy of a completed survey if you give out surveys to show how you get input from your customers. You can talk about social media and how they respond to you. Um, you, you can talk about uh, the BBB and uh, how they respond to you. Uh, provide examples of advertising, marketing materials that show your organization's commitment to ethical business practices because that helps you get customers. You can provide a description of methods used to ensure all sales, promotions, materials, and advertisements are truthful and accurate. And give some examples of good customer service provided by your organization. And one thing that people forget, if you are a BBB accredited business, you should have the BBB accredited business logo on your website because that in and of itself tells customers that you're a reliable business 
because you've been vetted and you're a BBB accredited business. So that shouldn't be underestimated because thousands of people go to BBB.org and they're looking for accredited businesses. Their customers want to deal with companies that belong to the Better Business Bureau. So if you are a BBB accredited business, please, you can give a screenshot of your page on your website. It's usually on the homepage of a, a company's website. Uh, the BBB accredited business logo, it's a dynamic logo. If you don't have it, uh, give Josh or me a call and we'll tell you who to get in touch with to get that up on your website because that's something that's easy to do and will help in this section of the criteria. Okay. Number four. This, this is to display your organization's programs, contributions, and activities and value and support to your community. Uh, this is extremely important to the judges because it's not only what you do for yourself, for your employees, but what do you do for your community to help make it a better place to live, work, and do business? When addressing, addressing this criteria, it says to please, please describe programs or events that your organization has in place. I can't read the whole thing, to actively engage the community, I think. How employees are encouraged to recognize, recognize for spending time in the community service activities that your organizations and employees take part in or contribution of funds or in-kind services to community programs with organizations that you value. Uh, that is so important in this application because it shows how well-rounded you are. And uh, it can be anything like for a small company, it can be something like if you only have one or two employees, Maybe you volunteer as a, a coach for something. Or maybe you, you personally, because you don't have very many employees, or you and your, your employees participate by donating to the food bank. Anything that's community oriented, oriented is acceptable here, depending on the size of your company. Different businesses do things differently on a regular basis. So we'll go on to suggestions of things you could include in this. Some of you do pro bono work. Pro bono work is work that you do for somebody that really can't afford your services and you do it for free. Do you collaborate with other companies, with other organizations? This is really for charities and bigger companies. The Better Business Bureau collaborates. We collaborate with AARP. We collaborate with other Better Business Bureaus. And you can talk about some of those collaborations. We collaborate with uh, the news media, with the police sometimes. Those are the kinds of collaborations we've had over the years. You can give an example of a program or provide data showing organ how your organization cultivates inclusion and diversity. You can list your organization's memberships in local national trade or industry groups or provide a recent example over the past two years of a recognition received for your organization's ethics or community service. Now, these are all suggestions. You are not by any means obligated to use these. And you should certainly don't need to use them all unless you have really good answers for them. I put these together myself to help you, to give you some ideas of what you can address for this criteria. So it's meant to help you and to make it a little easier to decide what you want to write. 
So make those decisions before you start writing. Make some notes, maybe an outline of what you want to say. Start with the criteria you're most comfortable with. Fill that one out first and then move to another one. Again, get input and have somebody else read your answers before you submit it. Make sure you're addressing the criteria and you're, you're not just talking about how great your company is and not talking about exactly what they're looking for. They're looking for ethics. The judges are looking for how you practice, promote, carry out ethics in your business. Now I'm open for questions. Josh has put my email out up in his email. We will get back to you. If you email me, we'll set up a phone call if you want to discuss something. You can email us and say, can you take a look at this? Am I answering this criteria? Am I addressing it correctly? That's what we're here for. We want you to be successful. We do not want you to be frustrated. And let me tell you, this is the easiest application we've ever had. I worked on the national, I worked on this application. I worked with a national team of different CEOs from Better Business Bureaus. And we put this new application together last year. And I hope you find it easy. It doesn't have points. It, 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 it'll be judged on your overall answers. And uh, just do the best you can. And even if you don't win and it's your first time, it's a great exercise at looking at how your company operates ethically. This is about ethics. This is about integrity. And uh, it's not about making money. It's about how you practice ethics in the work, workplace. Are you sure there's no questions? You must have covered it really well, Margo. I thought you put it best though. I, we, we are here for you. We want you to succeed in, in your application process. What's great about this is it's not a fan voting system, right? It's you, you show your work. And I think that's really commendable in a time where it's really difficult to know who to trust, um, increasingly so. So, uh, you know, thank you all for being here. Truly, like Margo said, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, but, uh, you know, we're really excited to, to have you here and to, and to see, you know, the broad um, range of businesses that are interested in applying, because I think that shows that our communities are, are, are doing a, a pretty good job of, uh, you know, um, showcasing an integrity uh, in the marketplace. I'd like to say another thing. When, when you submit when you submit your application, it will go to Josh. But in the end, he will send the applications from South Dakota to Jesse Schmidt, who is our director in South Dakota. He'll keep the Omaha Southwest Iowa ones. And the ones from the Kansas Plains will, will go to Denise Groney, who's the director of the Kansas office. And then if Lincoln and Greater Nebraska decides they're, they're going to take applications, that will go to our Lincoln director, Tammy Barrett. So Josh will ferret them out after the deadline. And uh, you will be notified after the judging we don't know when the judging will take place. It'll be sometime in the summer after April. And then you'll be notified of the results, whether you were a winner or not. And uh, that's how we do it. Excellent. Well, thanks again, everybody, for, for being here. Um, I hope you have a great Friday and a, and a